you know, he, he can, can for, sort of feel intimidating, but you get the impression there's a, there's a, there's a nice guy there. What was it specifically about him that made you say, I need him? I gotta get him. Oh, no pressure, is alive. <laughs> the first thing I'd say is that I think there is a tendency in this field to um, slot people into certain kinds of boxes in terms of Woo! Woo! Since the first moment that I saw Brian on stage, which I will never forget, which was in a studio, a studio rehearsal space at a university where there were like 40 people watching. Um, Brian will not be confined by those boxes. He is an actor, I think, of singular range and capacity. Um, he can do anything. I, I really believe that. Um, uh, and in the case of this particular role, so I would have been looking for anything to do with Brian. <laughs> in the case of this particular role, I think he is also an actor and a human being of singular depth, um, uh, enormity of spirit, and sensitivity and courage, uh, and I would say empathetic imagination and curiosity, all of which struck me as hugely relevant to the project of this film and this role. Um, there's a lot more I could say, but. I see we have four minutes and eight seconds, so <laughs> amazing person. Um, and just acknowledge that for me, this project really ignited um, the night that I met Jen. Um, I had read this, the original script for this film, and only a few weeks later, I heard that she had read it and had a similar reaction that I had. Um, and I was asked would I like to have dinner with her, and I very quickly said yes. Um, and then we met. And I walked away from that first encounter so profoundly galvanized by the sense of um, what kind of a creative partnership I could have with this person of such remarkable ability and likewise courage. Um, uh, so I would say um, uh, this was sort of a dream opportunity and, and to put these two together um, to, to see their singular chemistry then come to life so instantaneously was very gratifying. Well. editor-in-chief of Deadline, so forget about the clock, we'll be all right. Um, Jennifer, how about you? What, what, what is it that you said, what was it about the script and, and, and where you wanted to be as an actress and a producer? You're making your producing debut here, I believe. What was it that this character and this relationship between these, these kind of, it's one of those things, two broken people who kind of make a whole what was it? I mean, it's so funny when it's all said and done and finished and everything looks like a perfect plan. And um, it, I didn't, I, I don't think I would have known what, what to tell you when I read the script, what I was so drawn to, why the themes of PTSD or these, imagine, these invisible injuries or forgiveness or, um, finding someone to cope with, uh, why all of that uh, drew me in that moment, I don't really know. Um, and I was, I knew, I, I knew I wanted to make it, and then when I met Lila, I knew that Lila was the only person who could, who I wanted to make it with. And, um, and then as Justine said, we, we had so many interruptions. The film had the opportunity to become so many different things because we were all so um, open under Lila and under her direction and following her instincts and not afraid to change things or ask each other questions and you know put all of our blood sweat into this into this movie. And it, I, I don't know. It, it started off as recovering from trauma and then Brian and I had a conversation a couple of years later on set about commitment anxieties and staying somewhere um, not feeling like home and your home and what, what that feels like and so there were so many different conversations it was so many different things um, and now we're here it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> and you all spent a lot of time speaking with uh with um, veterans who had been in uh, traumatic mishaps in, uh, in the war, and um, how did that help 
in terms of informing the character because she's never hopeless it's just sort of like a temporary thing i'll be ok and then it's a question of what does she want the she really want to go back to such a dangerous undertaking it was immensely helpful to me incredible heroes that were in similar circumstances i think looking at the physical aspects for me probably i went into sitting down with soldiers with tbis and ptsd and you expect it to look like one thing oh well i could do this i could do that it's very clear it's not it doesn't look like one thing on on one person um and we had help with physical therapists who are in the movie with me helping me learn how to move and um it was it was extremely uh informative and in most of all we wanted to represent them correctly um you know we have a a, a moment left and there's just something that i promised myself i would ask you if i met you I spent some time with Taylor Sheridan, and he was talking about a young actress named Isabel May on 1883, and he said, you know, she's the most singular generational talent I've come across since Jennifer Lawrence, and we, before he became like this, uh, you know, the Taylor Sheridan universe came into being, he was an out-of-luck actor, and he was an acting teacher, and he said that you came to him, and he actually gave you your money back, and said, this is what he told me, he said, there's nothing I can teach you other than don't let the bastards change you. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> I remember going to see somebody in New York. I don't know where it was. This I was, remember this going was to see Winter's like an acting teacher, or an right. acting coach, and him telling my mom, here's your money back just don't put her in any acting lessons whatever you do was that taylor sheridan that was taylor sheridan <laughs> he told me that directly <laughs> and i was thinking to myself what is that like to have somebody you know say i, I can't take your money i have, not, I have nothing to share I don't even know. I mean, I almost barely even remember that I was 14. I just remember my mom saying that over and over. You know, this one guy said that we, she just shouldn't even go to an acting class. That one guy is Taylor Sheridan. That's crazy. Well, that was just, uh, yeah, it was Taylor Sheridan. Yeah. I have to call my mom. <laughs> call Taylor Sheridan. <laughs> How often do we actually learn something from these things? So this is a good way to wrap up.